Has your low back been bothering you? Does that back pain scare you from going back to the gym? We're gonna go over five exercises today to keep you working out and keep you in the gym, even with that low back pain. Just because you have low back pain does not mean you can't go to the gym. We're gonna review some exercises that work on reducing the range of motion, maintaining core stability, just taking away any potential stress, keeping you in a nice, safe position as we continue to lift so you don't lose any progress during your workouts. Our first exercise today is the kettlebell dead bug. Vaughn, I want you to think about drawing that stomach in, flattening the low back into the floor so we're engaging that transverse abdominus muscle, creating this nice bracing through the front side of the core. Now I want you to start dropping the weight down towards your head as you kick one leg out. What we're doing here is creating an anti-extension moment. The body wants to arch the low back, so we're challenging Vaughn's core to stay nice and tight, resist that arch, resist that back bend. This is a great way to just get your body going, prepare you for your lifts to come. I'd recommend two sets of five reps per leg with this dead bug exercise just to start. Even though you have back pain, I know it might be scary to go into this hinging position, so what we're first going to do is reduce the range of motion. We're gonna achieve that by placing a box underneath the kettlebell, underneath your weights. That way, um, you do not have to bend down as low. So potentially we're avoiding any rounding that can occur at the low back. So we're straddling the box, handle of the kettlebell is in line with the shoelaces. We're gonna hinge back, push your weight back into the heels and just lift up nice and strong. So we're still challenging the posterior chain. So that's your hamstrings, those are your glutes. We have the paraspinals, those back muscles are working right now engage. But we're in a safe position we, because we reduce the required range of motion for this exercise. That way we can avoid any potential flare-ups when it comes to lifting weights. Another modification we have for the deadlift is to use the trap bar. The trap bar is a great tool because it allows you to set up your feet directly below that weight. If you're used to deadlifting with a barbell, what happens is that bar is gonna be blocked by your shins, right? So their weight is going to be slightly forwards, um, slightly anterior to your spine. So when that happens with the barbell deadlift, we have a lot of extra potential stress, extra stress at the low back. By using this trap bar, we're setting up the weight directly in line with the body, much safer. So we're gonna bend down, hinge down, just like you would with a conventional deadlift. Drop the hips ever so slightly, tight core, and just standing up nice and strong. Think about ending up in a vertical position. Try not to hyperextend, but just being nice and tall, nice and straight with this exercise. As always, with a deadlifting exercise, start out with 25% weight, 50% weight. Build yourself up to that 80% one rep max. We're gonna be working in three to four sets of eight repetitions. Fourth exercise, we're gonna work on the lats right here, the chest supported row. The beauty of the chest supported row is we have a lot of stability right here, right? The bench is supporting his chest and as well, I want you to start rowing. Really think about driving those elbows down and back, pull towards the ceiling. Great, always think about leading with the elbows. That way we can increase that engagement in the latissimus muscle. This is again, this is a great exercise. Uh, it could be a modification to replace a bent over row where if you're just standing in space, that could be quite uh, irritating for your low back if you're dealing with low back pain. For sets and reps, let's try for four rounds of eight repetitions at a comfortable, moderate intensity weight. Final exercise, we're going with the farmer's march. So we have some kettlebells right at your side. This exercise truly can be performed with kettlebells or dumbbells. We're just using this because the handle is a little bit higher, positioned further away from the ground and making it easier for you to pick it up from the floor. So Vaughn can pick up those weights. What I want you to think about as we're going with this farmer's march, nice tight core, rib cage, pull it towards the belt buckle. Great, and we're just gonna march in place, try to be nice and stable. Perfect upright posture. And this is a great exercise if you have low back pain because we're working everything. We're working the legs right now. We're hitting the shoulders and the grip strength, but we're creating this axial load. We're creating a slight amount of compression through the spine, which is healthy, which we want to provide to encourage healing, to encourage blood flow, to stimulate the spine, stimulate the low back, really train some nice full body strength. 
I like to go for time or duration rather than repetitions. So you can start out with sets of 30 second marches. If you want to challenge yourself a little bit more, start adding in 15 seconds at a time. So thinking 45 second sets, one minute sets, etc. I go for three sets of 30 to 60 seconds to start and then modify and increase that duration as you see fit. If you have a lot of space to work with, feel free to make it fun. You can start walking up and down the gym, but we're gonna stay right here in place. This is perfect as well if you're working out in a confined environment. As you can see, there are many, many options for you to continue and maintain your fitness and workout, even though you have that low back pain, that low back discomfort. Again, if you do have a persistent pain and it's not changing, I'd recommend speaking to a medical provider to give you uh, advice.